We know that climate change is occurring, but it's sometimes very difficult to actually feel or experience. But by looking at glaciers from year to year and how they retreat, we can visualize climate change. My name is Matthias Vui. I'm an associate professor and I work in the Department of Atmospheric and Environmental Sciences at the University of Albany. My research focuses on how climate change in the future over the next decades will affect glaciers, the size of glaciers, their extent, and also the meltwater that they can provide. The fact that glaciers are retreating in the Andes may seem like it's something that is very far away. Here it just manifests itself in a different way. We are going to have issues with sea level rise, potentially with stronger hurricanes, more floods and droughts, more extreme events. The funding for this project is from the U.S. State Department. It's a program that was announced by President Obama in 2009 in South America. These countries are not really well equipped to deal with the impacts. Peru has only about one or two trained glaciologists with a PhD. So one idea of this project is that we have fellowships for young students who are interested in this field that we can bring them to the University of Albany. Working with us, they take classes here, they get educated, and that once they receive their degree, they go back. My name is Oscar Chimborazo. After I finished my undergraduate studies in Ecuador, I found the opportunity to come here to Albany to do some research in atmospheric science. I was very concerned and very worried about what is happening to the retreat of glaciers. The main goal is to have this relationship with the other scientists here in other parts of the world, like Matthias, to improve the quality of science in Ecuador. An often asked question is, can we stop climate change? And the short answer, unfortunately, is no. In fact, in the Andes, we have many examples of glaciers that have completely disappeared already. There are a lot of built-in future impacts that have not yet materialized, but that we have already committed to. We have regions that are very dry in South America, and the only water that is in the rivers is the water that melts from these glaciers. So the danger is that communities adapt to that very quickly because they think this is sustainable and this is how much water they have available. When we talk about how much warming can we allow, there is a number that has emerged in the climate community and that is two degrees Celsius, about four degrees Fahrenheit. Currently we are about 0.8 degrees above the pre-industrial temperature. So these are very real numbers with very real consequences and it means that we have very little time until we have to act. It can be very dire to look at this situation on a day-to-day -day basis, but I draw my optimism mostly from the younger generation because I see that they're very concerned about the environment, they have a lot of enthusiasm, and I'm very optimistic that the next generation of breakthroughs are going to have to be in renewable energy. And if we do that, I think we have the chance to turn these things around. But we need to start working on these issues now.